Hi there, I'm Eitan, and welcome back to Wix Wiz. Today I'm here with a really exciting announcement, and that is that OpenAI has released the ChatGPT API as the chat completions endpoint, which you can see right here in front of you. And this really takes the text completions to the next level and allows you to build applications like ChatGPT with the same technology as ChatGPT. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to utilize this new endpoint for your chatbot built using Wix and OpenAI. These two clips are part of my larger course that I'll be offering on my site, uh, link in the description below. But if you wanna see the basic implementation of this endpoint and upgrade your AI chatbot app, then continue watching. So what you see here is some of the code that we wrote in previous videos. And this code is using the text completion endpoint, which if you recall, it sends a prompt and receives an answer. Uh, so that would be this text completion endpoint. And we had engineered it so that the prompt itself was built as a conversation. And we were hoping to get a response that would fit the flow of that conversation. Recently, OpenAI has released a new chat completion. Okay, so you can see here it's beta. This was released super recently, and it is powered by a new model, which is the same model that powers chat GPT. And basically, this model takes in a prompt or a body that is built as messages. So it's built in a message format, and it's more appropriate for building AI chatbots than the text completion. And you can see here that the tasks that we can expect of it are more versatile than what we could expect of the regular uh, text completion. So let's take a deeper look into how this actually works. So we are going to be sending an array, and this array will contain the messages. Each message is an object, and it contains uh, two parts. One is the role, uh, and the role can be one of three things. So it could be system, user, or assistant, where system are instructions that we give to the AI, for example, what the personality is, how it should behave, uh, and user would be messages from the user, assistant would be messages from the AI, so either previous messages generated by the AI or example messages of how we would expect this assistant to behave. And these messages themselves are put as the content. So we have role and content. And what this is going to return is the next message uh, in the conversation. So we could see here the response format, and we can see here the message with the role and the content. OK, so it's built in advance to be a conversation. That is the expectation of this um, endpoint. It's important to note that just like previously, uh, we're limited in terms of tokens. And the original messages that we send are count towards our token limit. So if we have an extremely long conversation, we're not going to be able to send all of the messages. We're going to have to cut it down in some way and only send a few of the most recent messages, maybe six, maybe eight. That's something we're going to have to uh, play around with. Uh, but in the end of the day, this using this endpoint should give us a much more streamlined chat experience. And that's what we're going to try and do now. So what I'm going to do is head down here. Uh, like before, we have the guide, which is kind of just a general explanation. And here we have the specific endpoint, which we can use in order to, let me zoom in a little bit, the, the instructions for actually making a call to the API. And I'm going to be building on top of the stuff we already created. Uh, so I'm not going to be going over how to store your API key and build out some of these basic elements of the function. I'm just going to be implementing it for this specific new endpoint. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new function. And I'm going to call it get next at message. Okay, because that's essentially what this function is going to do. And it's going to be an asynchronous function. Sorry, I think I'm in another language by accident. Let me switch to English. It's going to be an asynchronous function. And we are going to be using the same API key that we have stored already. So I'm just going to copy over this line, which gets our API key from the secrets manager. And in terms of our URL, so this is going to be this endpoint right over here, chat completions. Okay, so let's store that as our URL. Uh, sorry, not await, oh, just this. Okay, so that's our URL that we'll be using. And in terms of the body, so let's take a look at the body that it's expecting. Um, so in terms of content type authorization, it looks quite similar. Uh, the model needs to be GPT 3.5 Turbo. So I'm going to copy over that new model. Okay, so this is the new model that we're going to be using. And in terms of what we send over, instead of prompt, it's going to be messages. So I'm going to copy both our options and the body from over here because it's going to be quite similar. And let's just hit format on that. And instead of the model, we're going to put this GPT 3.5 Turbo. And instead of the prompt, we're going to have messages. OK, let me just make sure that that's what it's called. Yeah, messages. You can see this over here. Messages. And for max tokens, we're going to want a lot more than seven. So I'm going to put it at 1,000. And the max tokens for this uh, this um, endpoint is 4,096. So if you want the most, then, then you could put that. Um, and if you don't put anything, then it'll be at that. So if you just don't put max tokens, then that will be returned like that. Let me just make sure here. Yeah, max tokens. Okay. And for the messages, we're going to need to create an array of messages. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually steal the array that they have here inside of the guide. So if I go here to chat completion, I'm just going to take this example that they have here. OK, because that would be easiest instead of writing something for ourselves. So I'm going to say here, const example. messages and paste that right over here. And that's what I'm going to pass uh, right now while we're doing some testing of the endpoint. So I'm going to put that right over here. Example messages. Excellent. And now we actually have to call the endpoint. So that's I'm just going to copy these three lines over here. And this should be enough in order to test the endpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and click run and run right over here. And the endpoint was returned with this and under choices we have message. And I don't know if you could see so well because it's towards the bottom of the screen. But this is the answer that we got. Okay, and it might even be the same exact answer that we see over here. Yeah, so that's this right over here. Okay, 
So we got the endpoint working. And the next thing we're going to do is take a look at how we can actually pass the messages back and forth from the front end of our website so that a user can interact with this model. So now we're over here on the front end. And what you can see here is the template uh, that we created for people who are going to be taking the full course. And now what I'm going to be doing is just hooking up this input here and this button so that when an input is sent, it will interact with the backend module that we built and get the response from the endpoint. I'm not going to be populating the repeater or anything like that at this point. So in order to do that, let's open up our editor here. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see the code a little better. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to create a wrapper function, which will take the user input and call the back end module. Uh, before we do that, we need to make one slight change to the back end module. So I'm going to go to our open AI file. And what we're going to need to change is that this get next chat message will need to take a parameter. So at the moment, there is no parameter being passed to get next chat message. And we're going to want to pass in a parameter of messages. And this parameter is what we are going to put here instead of the example messages. And essentially, this is the same thing as just writing messages with one comma. And now that we set that up, I'm just going to copy the example messages that we have here. And I'm going to paste them commented out on the front end just so that we have an example of what our data needs to look like that we're passing to the back end. So I'm going to paste that right over there. Now what we can do is import our back end function. So I'm going to be importing the function of, let me just double check what it was called, get next chat message. So I'm going to copy the name of that function. And we're going to import that here on the front end. And we're importing that from backend slash open AI or dash open AI. Great. Now we can start creating our wrapper function. And I'm going to call this function in uh, user input handler, because it's handling what happens when a user um, inputs something. Uh, or essentially, I can call this also message message send handler. OK, that would be more accurate because this is what's the handler that's used when a message is sent. And this is going to be an asynchronous function because we are going to be awaiting promises here from things that we send to uh, the back end and to the final API. The first thing I'm going to need to do inside of this function is to store the value of the user input in a variable. And I'm just going to call that variable user input. And the name of the element, which is the input element, which I showed you before, is user input. So I'm going to get the value of that. And now what we're going to need to do is to place this value inside a format that looks like this. So in order to do that, I'm going to declare a global variable of messages. And this is going to be an array. Because as you can see here, the outer structure of this uh, data is an array. And we're going to have a single message, which will be an object. And this message will have a role, which in this case will be the user, because we're sending the user input. And it's going to have content, which will be the user input itself. OK, and I'm just using what I see here in order to structure this data. And I'm going to push this to the messages array. So at the moment, there's nothing in the messages array. But you can imagine in the future, uh, once we build out more of the conversation, this messages array might include more of the interaction. And I'm pushing this message to the end of that array. So I'm going to push the message. Message. 
And now we can actually uh, make our call uh, to our backend function. So I'm going to say const answer is equal to await get next chat message. And I'm going to pass in all of our messages. Then at the end, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to log this answer. OK. And this message send handler is going to be called when we click the button. So I'm going to add an event listener to our send button, which is the name of the send button. And this is going to be an on click event listener. And I'm going to add the uh, message send handler right over there. OK, so this is essentially all that we need in order to collect the user input send it to the back end and get an answer back. So I'm going to go ahead and publish this. And we're going to check it out now on the live site. So I'm going to go here to the live site. I'm just going to refresh. And as you can see, um, the UI itself is not completely built out yet. Um, and there are some things that need to be hidden and shown here in terms of the template. but if I hit inspect here and go into the developer tools and go into console, then we'll be able to see the log that we console. Then we will be able to see the log that we get back after the user input. So I'm going to say here, what is your name? And I'm going to hit the send button. And then if we wait a moment, then here we get the answer back. And essentially, we don't need this entire um, answer. Uh, we can kind of refine the answer later on. What we need is stored here inside of choices. And then uh, let me just zoom in here a little bit. Maybe that help you see. Oh, that didn't really zoom the console. Never mind. Uh, I hope you can see. And uh, in here inside of choices, we have the message itself. And we have the role and the content. And you can see that the answer to what is your name was as an AI language model, I do not have a name. You can call me OpenAI, etc. OK, and the next step will be to take this answer and attach it to the rest of our messages and await the next user input after we display this answer to the user. So that's the first steps in creating a chat bot with this new chat completion endpoint. So that is all for this uh, video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as I said in the intro, these are actually parts of a very extensive course that I'm creating to help you build a chat GPT clone using Wix and OpenAI. And obviously, we'll be incorporating the new information that I explained in this video about the new chat completion endpoint of OpenAI. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.